Hello, and welcome to this uh, film about factors that affect rates of chemical reactions. It's the last of the four films about energy and rates from stage two. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look through the factors that affect chemical reactions. We're going to try and get into this routine of explaining things in a certain way. Okay, so we're going to provide detailed explanations of changes that we can make to reaction conditions that might affect rates of chemical reactions. We're going to try and use collision theory to explain our answers. Okay, let's start off by looking at concentration. Or similarly, you could be looking at pressure of gases. Okay, remember here is our routine. We're going to try and mention what happens to the frequency of collisions. So does it go up or down and why? in terms of collision theory and we're going to say what happens to the chances of a collision being successful so that's having enough energy to ha to get over the hill or in other words to have the activation energy and why in terms of collision theory okay let's have a look at what happens when we change the concentration of a substance okay here are two reactants one red one blue in a solution so that's the turquoise dots of the solvent or the water molecules okay in this box we've got a solution of low concentration and in this solution we've got a higher concentration okay now what happens to the frequency of collisions in these two things right well hopefully it's pretty obvious that um, these two things are going to collide more often okay than the things in here because there's simply more of them in the same space there are more particles in the same volume okay why is it important to mention something about the volume there well you could imagine if I had a very big beaker of this one I'd actually have more particles than there are in this container here but they'd be more spread out and so less likely to collide with one another okay so it's not about how many particles there are it's about how many there are in a particular space or per unit volume okay so the frequency of collisions as we increase the concentration will increase. Why will it increase? Because there are more particles in a particular space or per unit volume. What happens to the chances of the collision being successful? I'm just going to look. It doesn't really matter which of these sets of diagrams I look at, but this uh, is supposed to be showing you a solid reacting with another uh, reactant that is in solution. And here's the low concentration situation. And here's the higher concentration situation again more likely to collide with one another if there's more particles per unit volume okay but what happens to the chances of a collision being successful that is what happens to the number of particles that have enough energy to react well nothing happens to that okay just simply having more particles doesn't mean that a greater proportion of them are going to have enough energy to react okay so the chances of a collision being successful doesn't change because the particles have the same energy on average okay so changing the concentration doesn't change the average energy okay moving on moving on to surface area so this is the second of our factors that could affect a rate what happens to the frequency of collisions well let's look at our diagrams here we've got here we've got a reactant reacting with the red reactant particles okay in a large lump okay so its state of subdivision is is not it's not as subdivided as this um, react the green reactant here. Okay, this one's been divided up more. Its surface area is greater because it's been broken up into smaller pieces. Okay, the same number of atoms here as it says here, but they've been broken up into smaller bits. So what happens to the frequency of collisions? Well, the frequency of, coll of collisions as you increase the surface area will increase because there are a greater number of particles exposed to collisions okay so that's the what happens and why what happens to the chances of a collision being successful again this is to do with the energy that collisions have okay and simply by breaking something up into smaller pieces that doesn't mean you've changed the energy of the particles so that's not going to be a cause of the rate changing okay so what happens to the frequency of collisions they increase because there's more particles exposed to collisions the chances of them being successful the collisions being successful in other words leading to a reaction don't doesn't change because the particles still have the same amount of energy okay moving on to the third factor that's temperature 
It's not to say that temperature has to be the third one. It's just the third one we're talking about here. Okay. Now, what happens to the frequency of collisions as the temperature increases? We'll cast your mind back to what we looked at in kinetic theory. When we look at a sample at a higher temperature than the other, so that's the red line here compared to the blue line, the average kinetic energy of the particles has increased, okay, which means they're moving faster, which means they'll collide with each other more often. Okay, so the frequency of collisions will increase because the particles are moving faster. Okay, what happens to the chances of a collision being successful? Well, this is um, what is shown by this shaded area of the graph over here. Okay, if we mark on this graph the minimum energy needed for a reaction, or in other words, the activation energy, okay, we can say that when we're on the blue temperature, these particles here have enough energy to react. Okay? So that is the proportion that's the total percentage of particles that have enough energy to react. When we go up to the higher temperature, not only have we got these blue ones, but we've also got these red ones here. Okay? So in other words, by increasing the temperature, we've increased the proportion of particles that have enough energy to react or that exceed the activation energy. So the chances of a collision being successful or leading to a reaction increases because the particles have more energy on average. Okay, so there's a greater proportion of particles with enough energy to react. Okay, not more particles. Okay, this is like the concentration explanation. It's not about how many you've got. It's about the proportion of them that can do it. Okay, so a large container at a low temperature might have more particles than a small container at a higher temperature, but because the proportion of particles in the smaller container is higher, the proportion that have enough energy to react is higher, that reaction will happen quicker. Okay, so more frequent collisions because particles are moving faster, better chances of a collision being successful because a greater proportion of particles have enough energy to react. And finally, for this film and for this topic, in fact, uh, we'll have a look at the effect of adding a catalyst. Now, I'm going to get you to think back here to your work on the energy level diagrams, okay? And we'll see that with a catalyst, the activation energy for a reaction is smaller. It's actually a little bit inaccurate to say that. It's more accurate to say that there's actually a different reaction pathway that can occur with a catalyst, and that that has a smaller activation energy than the one without a catalyst, okay? So we're looking at our two different pathways, one with no catalyst, okay, so that's the uncatalyzed reaction, one with a catalyst, and we're seeing that the two activation energies for those processes are different, and the one with the catalyst is has a lower activation energy, okay? So it's going to be easier to get over the hill if you've got a catalyst, okay? And we can show that on this energy distribution, which we've seen before, okay? This is these two activation energies that we see here, the red one, okay? So that's the smaller one with a catalyst and the green one without a catalyst, okay? Are marked on this level, uh, this energy distribution diagram here, okay? There they are. And the catalyst, the catalyzed pathway has a low activation energy, so we're marking it at a lower energy. And what we can see here is that if you don't have a catalyst, this is the total proportion of particles or the total percentage of particles that have enough energy to react. As soon as we add a catalyst, again, the percentage of particles that have enough energy to react has increased. So let's have a look at our collision theory explanations, this routine that we're always following. Okay, what happens to the frequency of collisions? Well, nothing really. Adding a catalyst doesn't make the particles collide with each other more often, okay? Because, well, why doesn't it? Because they're still moving at the same speed and there's still the same number of particles. But the chances of a collision being successful or leading to a reaction has increased because the activation energy with a catalyst is lower than it was without a catalyst. And so a greater proportion, again, a greater proportion of particles have enough energy to react. Okay. So that is that for kinetics. Hopefully, um, 
one thing that you've learned is that if you're going to provide a collision theory explanation, it can be useful to think of a routine that you're always going to follow, because otherwise you can miss out important details, and it's really important to be quite clear in your explanations of this. Okay, so hopefully all the topics are understood. If there's anything that at all that's causing you difficulty, please find time to ask some questions or post some comments, and um, good luck with that.